Hello and welcome to the Overdue Podcast, Episode 7. I'm Kelly, and with me today are my fellow Madison College librarians, Mark. Hello. Dana. Hi there. Christina. Hi, everyone. And our special guest, Erica. Hello. Today we're going to check in with everyone and see how their summer reading is going. We'll also have some pre-recorded interviews with some of our staff and students on what they're reading or what they plan to read this summer. We'll also have Waiting in Westeros, Trivial Observations with Mark, and our Anything Goes recommendations. Dana? All right. So in our last podcast, we mentioned that we would be keeping track of what we were reading this summer Mm -hmm. and um, just trying to encourage people to keep reading. So we're just wondering how it's going, if you're sticking to your list, if there's anything out of the ordinary. So, uh, Mark, would you like to start us out with your summer reading? Sure. A uh, book that I was looking forward to reading this summer, I just picked up today, a novel called Florida by Gabe Habish. And actually picking it up today, I'm looking at the uh, inside cover and uh, reading uh, the first chapter. It looks like it's going to be, I thought it was going to be a whimsical book, but it looks like it's going to be much darker <laughs> than I had anticipated. And uh, the book jacket actually describes it as a mix between Foxcatcher and Fight Club. Oh, so wow. possibly a little darker than I anticipated, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to reading it. Some I, light I had, summer reading. Yeah. Yeah. I had seen it on a must-read list for the summer. I can't remember. Um, maybe it was the New York um, Times or something, but it, it does look good. What mm-hmm. was the title? Uh, Steve Florida. Steven Florida. Steve in Florida. Oh, oh okay. okay. That hmm. sounds cool. Great. Thanks. All right. Um, next, um, myself. Um, so first this summer, I read a book on... It was a nonfiction book on communication and interpersonal relationships, and mm-hmm. I found that to be really helpful, um, kind of a little insightful book. Was and, it like from a parent's perspective? Um, or? No, more like a human. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the every person. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I got a lot out of that one, and what I'm currently reading right now is a book another nonfiction, which is really abnormal for me, um, <laughs> you? but it's called Everything That Remains. It mm. is by Joshua oh, yeah. Fields Milburn mm. and Ryan Nicodemus, who are the minimalists, mm. <laughs> and I love minimalism, and they uh, wrote a couple books, and this is kind of detailing their journey through it. It's pretty exciting. And up next, I am going to read The Buried Giant, which... Yay. Okay, so next, um, Christina, what are, what are you reading? Um, well, I think when we, uh, I, I think it was our last podcast, we gave like our plan for some reading and mine was that I was going to try to get through all of the nonfiction books on my bookshelf at home that I <laughs> bought or rented and for some reason never got to. And so my goal was, you know, to make some progress. And I am sorry to report that I have completely failed. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I started one, um... And it's now sitting next to my bed. I'm one of those people that, like, tends to read a a lot of different books at the same time, though. The same way. Yeah. So um, I started that one. Um, Then at my in-law's house, they had had, um, I think somebody picked it up at work, this book called A Man Called, I think it's pronounced Uwe in in its original language, Um, but so I picked it up. It had a really good cover, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and it was really good. Um, it's um, a man called it's O V E is how the title is spelled, and it's a really funny dark um, book about a curmudgeonly um, older person who um, all of a sudden has to interact with his neighbors. Mm-hmm. Um, very very dark I'm, um, I'm and funny. Sold. That's- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I highly recommend it. It ends up, um, well, I don't want to give too much away, but um, I I would recommend it. One of our other fellow librarians, I guess, just read that or somewhat recently read that and was recommending it to us at the lunch break one day. Mm -hmm. And 
And I said, well, based on your description, it almost sounds like a non-violent Gran Torino, if you ever saw Clint Eastwood. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's almost like that. And mm-hmm. and she's like, yeah, it kind of is. But yeah, no violence. <laughs> so. Yeah, we just purchased it. I don't remember if it was the book or the audio book. So mm. coming soon to your local Madison College Library. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they um, made a movie out of it, too. Mm-hmm. I want to say it was at the last Wisconsin Film Festival. It's an international um, author. So and awesome. Speaking of stay tuned, I actually noticed that the, the title was available through Hoopla, Ooh. which is a fancy oh. new um, toy that hopefully um, more people get to play with in the future. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that should be on our trials page, right? It is right yeah. now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Oh, yeah, Hoopla. If, if you're looking at it, yeah. Talk to a librarian, and we might know something about that. <laughs> um, the only other things I'm reading um, before bed, I always we like my husband and I read to each other sometimes before oh, bed. Oh, so, nice. and that one we're reading um, Harry Potter, the third book in Spanish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. So that's been really in- fun because I read it in English the first time. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of weird to switch between like Hermione and like you know, but. I don't know. It's fun. I like it. <laughs> uh, my daughter's reading the third one. Oh, right really? Now. Yeah, so. Oh, nice. I hope lots of Harry Potter is mm-hmm. being read this summer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. That sounds fun. And Kelly, how about you? Okay. Well, I um, I took uh, one of my books I was going to read was The Lies of Locke Lamora. Oh, yeah. And um, I didn't get to read much of it on vacation, um, maybe like 10 or 15 pages a day. Um, but I've enjoyed it, and I'm, I've got, like, 50 more pages to go, and I'm mm. finishing. Yeah. I have to say, it's pretty exciting. I don't know what... At 50 more pages, I have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, it's the first in a trilogy. Mm. So, yeah. So that, that's been really good. And um, one of the things about, you know, when you're on vacation and you're talking to a stranger and you say, oh, I'm a librarian, they just mm-hmm. start to talk about books, and mm-hmm. that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, and I talked to this woman, uh, and she had just finished The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. Oh. And um, I actually was given that book last year, and I mm. still haven't read it. So I'm like, I'm going to read it. So I'm going to add that to my list. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'll start that one uh, probably tomorrow. Cool, thanks. And our special guest of today's <laughs> podcast is our librarian, Erica Linsner, and she's going to share her summer reading now. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Mm-hmm. Um, this hopefully will be a fun experience for me. Um, <laughs> I do get quite nervous yeah. um, with this type of stuff, but thanks anyway. Um, so I'm not currently reading anything, but I just finished actually listening to an audiobook. I'm a big fan of audiobooks. I listen to them almost constantly in um, in the car on, to and from work or on longer trips. Um, and I just finished reading Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, oh. which I'm very, very late to the game. Um, it came out in like 2007 well, or something. Know, he hasn't come out with the third one, so you're not. Yeah, <laughs> well, and I, I read recently it took him like 10 years to write uh, that one, the first, the first one. one. Oh, so, oh, wow. yeah, who knows? I mean, not, you know, hopefully it doesn't take that long for the third. Um, yeah. So it is, yeah, part of the King Killer Chronicle um, series. Um, you know, it took a little while to get into it, mm-hmm. and I, at first I thought, well, maybe it's because I'm listening to it. Um, but I, I found, like, reading reviews that a lot, some readers felt that way, too, because he does a lot of setting up. And it is, you know, meant to be a trilogy, and I think he kind of knew that going into it. But I liked it. It was definitely, like, taking you to a different world and, yeah. you know, magic and mm. storytelling is a big theme, and I did, I did enjoy it. Um, but other than that, I don't have a list set. Now I feel maybe encouraged to come up with a list. Uh, it was not part of the last um, ep- you know, podcast, so maybe I will. Um, but we do a lot of reading in my house to the kid, to our kids. So like Harry Potter, we're kind of reading together at mm-hmm. bedtime and things like that. But other than that, that's, that's about it. All right. So student Leslie Guzman, what are you reading for this summer? I am reading two books, well, one audio book. Um, it is The Girls. I don't remember who the author is, but it's really hot right now. Okay. And um, Is that the one set, like, in California? Yeah, that, with the okay. whole yep. murders. and All right. Uh, yeah. And um, the other one is Rest Story by Anne McCaffrey. Oh, okay. Yeah. Deb recommended it to me, like, two years ago, and I have yet to finish it. So, finishing that up. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Our next segment is Waiting in Westeros.
Hello, I'm Dana. And I'm Kelly. And we're Waiting, Waiting in, in Westeros. Westeros. So Dana, it's been a while since our last installment of our multi-part segment on songs, dreams, and prophecies in George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire. Yeah, and I've had a while to think about it, and you know, we forgot something important to add to this discussion. Oh really? What's that? Visions. Ah, you're right. Good catch. How could we have forgotten that? I don't know. Visions are pretty important in the series. So, this segment will be about prophecies, dreams, and visions? Just so. First, let's talk about prophecies. George has a few things to say about prophecy in literature. He says, and I agree, prophecy can be a tricky business. Yeah, he also says prophecies are a double-edged sword. You have to handle them very carefully. They can add depth and interest to a book, but you don't want to be too literal or too easy. I think George has found a good balance. Yeah, me too. We should take a look at prophecies as face value as we're reading. However, we should question the interpretation given by that character. Good point. I guess that's where the double-edged sword comes in? Mm Mm-hmm. So, on to dreams in A Song of Ice and Fire. The use of dreams as a mode of narrative goes back to the medieval poets. George uses several types of dreams and dreamers throughout the series. There are regular dreams that conjure up the past, which in my opinion is a good way to learn a character's backstory or their true feelings on a matter without taking up too much time. And then there are some irregular dreams. There are wolf dreams, which we may bring up next time, And dreams brought on by tonics to ease pain and bring on sleep, such as milk of the poppy or dream wine. Also, there are a few characters blessed or cursed, depending on how you look at it, with green sight. A person with green sight has green dreams. They're filled with symbolic meaning, images, and metaphors of what's to come. I have a confession to make. Oh? Before I read A Song of Ice and Fire, I didn't put much weight into dreams and novels. I thought they were boring and, like George says, too easy. In my first, re- my first time reading Game of Thrones, I didn't pay too much attention when a character was having a dream. Big mistake. Ooh, when did you realize it? At the end of Game of Thrones, I felt maybe I was missing something. So I went back and reread those parts, and I was right. I missed a lot. Well, I'm glad to hear you figured it out early on. Yep. Yeah. So, now we've covered prophecies and dreams in A Song of Ice and Fire. Let's talk about visions. Right. Visions are another mode of narrative George employs. Yes. Visions are different than dreams and prophecies in that the character having the vision is awake and they're not under the influence. The exception to that is this blue wine called Shade of the Evening, which... It aids in visions, and it's used so much by a group of sorcerers that it stains their lips blue. Yeah. <laughs> the downside of having visions is the interpretations. Some of the characters are right about some of the things, but wrong about others. Then there are some characters that refuse to interpret their visions and leave it to us and the other characters to decipher. So, there you have it. Did we miss anything about dreams, prophecies, or visions? Oh, I'm sure we did. But I think our main point is not to dismiss them and pay close attention. Mm-hmm. So next time on Waiting in Westeros, we're going to talk about one of my favorite things in the series, warging. That's right. We'll tell you what a warg is and how to spot them. All right. Thank you for joining us and see you next time on Waiting Waiting in in Westeros. Westeros. Okay, so what about the glass candles? What are they? Would they be considered visions? I think so. There just hasn't been that many examples of them so far. On that note, what about the warwood trees? Visions, dreams, or prophecies? Mm, Good point. I'm sure we'll get more glass candles in Winds of Winter. And hopefully more warwood stuff? All right, and our next segment is uh, Trivial Observations with Mark. Since the theme for this uh, recording is um, summer vacations and books, my my quiz for you today is um, literary vacations. And I'll give you the author and the title. And uh, what uh, you guys will need to do is give me the city or, um, in some cases, country. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. 
that it takes place in. So, and I'll try to go from the easiest to the hardest. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> We're ready. All right. J.D. Salinger, Catcher in the Rye. New York City. Is it New York City, Philadelphia? great. Oh. James Joyce, oh. Ulysses. Dublin. Correct. Hey, <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Although he wrote it Lauren in Paris. Oh, I'm sorry? <laughs> I said although he wrote it when he was living in Paris. <laughs> True, but the, the setting, yeah, yeah I correct. guess I should have clarified that. That's it's okay. The setting of the book, yeah. I'm just being really nerdy about it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Laura Ingalls Wilder, Little House in the Big Woods. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Pippin, Wisconsin. Pippin, Wisconsin. Very good. Wow. That's um, Eric Larson, Devil in the White City. Oh, Chicago. That one Chicago. I actually knew. I, I did listen to it recently. <laughs> so. And for some extra trivia points, can anybody tell me what year's World Fair that was, it, was in Chicago? Was it 1908? Not, nope, it's a little New, earlier. Oh, oh. 1904? Um, 1890. Actually, I don't remember. 1893, I, I believe. Oh. 1893. All right. Okay. okay. Um, number four, uh, Lucy Maud Montgomery, Anne of Green Gables. Oh, Prince Edward Prince Island. Island. <laughs> Very good. I guess these were too easy. Um, <laughs> Stieg Larsson, Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. Oh, it's, it's well, Stockholm, it's, right? Well, yeah, I was I don't Very know. good. Stockholm. Sweden. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Uh, Graham Greene, The Quiet American. Uh, that might be a challenge. Vietnam. Where, where in Vietnam? What city specifically? I'll go with um, Saigon. Very good. Good guess. <laughs> <laughs> and the final one, uh, Dean Bacopoulos, My American Unhappiness. My American Unhappiness. I know it's in a college town, I just in the Midwest. It is a college town in the Midwest, yes. All is I it know. an unhappy town? Is it associated with unhappiness? <laughs> well, yeah, I could say there's unhappiness sometimes in this town, yeah. Um, does anybody want to take a guess? I, I just know it's in the Midwest. I, didn't, I haven't read it. I haven't either. I haven't either. Um, no. I'll, I'll, because I don't want to, you know, make anybody feel bad, I will go with Indianapolis because I'm a Hoosier, so I won't be offending anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's a good guess, but not quite. Um, anybody else? How about Ann Arbor, Michigan? Uh, also a good guess. Um, uh, Des Moines. Uh, no. <laughs> Have we hit the uh, right uh, state no, yet? No, did we hit? <laughs> you're, you're actually making a big circle around it. Okay. I'm moving the places. Squared, yeah. Um, hmm. Illinois, maybe? It, Champaign, Urbana? Illinois? Yeah. yeah, Illinois. Springfield. Okay, uh, no. That's <laughs> also an excellent guess. Should I just, just give yeah, you yeah, an answer? Yeah, give up. <laughs> Uh, it's it's Madison. Oh, oh my gosh! It's actually based you on a near lie. west side uh, over by the zoo. Oh, and you can read the you book. lie. Um, oh, and the, the, the descriptions are really good of that area. And if anybody lives on a near oh west side, you can sort of recognize a lot. That's I don't fun. believe you. Uh, I feel like pulling a prank on us. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the main character in it, uh, the reason it's called My American Unhappiness is he's a graduate student and he's working on a grant to uh, catalog why people are unhappy oh, in America. Oh. And, is that nonfiction? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's a fiction. <laughs> okay. so, you, I'm sorry. Um, you could take it as nonfiction as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You stuck right, us at the end there. Good job. That was fun. Thanks. All right. So our next segment is Anything Goes Recommendations. So this is anything, a book, a movie, whatever. So um, the, our first person will be Christina. Okay. So um, my recommendation today is your local library book sale. Oh. Um, I went to the one for my local library, um, which is in Madison, and it had these amazing titles. I ended up picking... 
two vintage books. Um, one was Dr. Zhivago, oh. and the other was Classic. Rebecca. Oh, mm. Daphne so, de Moray. Yeah, Daphne oh. de Moray, and they're beautiful, hard bound. Oh, that's um, great. And I was just like... Were they first editions? No, no they weren't. No, no, they were... No. <laughs> 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 but they were old and beautiful. Yeah, yeah. All right, and Dana? Um, mine is a podcast. Um, so when I came upon like uh, this DVD that we had just gotten in the documentary that the minimalists made, I thought, well, that looks pretty cool. And I saw they had a podcast, and being pretty novice podcaster myself, I started listening, <laughs> and I've gotten a lot of joy from listening to that, just kind of hearing people talk about their journeys with, Minimalism, but not necessarily even that. Um, but it's just kind of about uh, ways to make your life more meaningful and mm-hmm. have more value in each moment. Um, and I've so this is like completely not related, but one way that it helped me to question my own life is I've realized like one of my roadblocks I've always loved alone time and I don't really get that anymore because I'm a mom Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I've always loved running but I don't really get that anymore because I'm a mom (laughs) and I'm a dog owner but then it occurred to me like okay one of my roadblocks to running is that I have a dog why is that a roadblock? Yeah. <laughs> so just recently, dogs run. <laughs> Do they really? <laughs> My dog loves running. It turns out. Um, but uh, so one of the ways that I've just kind of questioned um, that and helped to reshape my. Uh, things is I've just been waking up earlier and I kind of get alone time and I just have been taking really long walks with my dog and it's not a run but I really don't think I could run at this point anyways but (laughs) it's been um it's been really great so Mm -hmm. it was really inspiring from the minimalists podcast Mm -hmm. so cool and then I think I'm next Mm -hmm. and I am going to recommend yoga just Mm -hmm. (laughs) yoga in general um about Two, three months ago, I joined a yoga studio, and so I'm going about four or five times a week. Oh, Um, wow. And I can't tell you the difference it's made. Not only physical, I'm sleeping better. Mm. I just, it's improved my state of mind. But then maybe that's because it's summer. I don't know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But but I kind of think it has something to do with it. And, you know, when I start to talk to people about it, they they always say, oh, you know, I've always wanted to try yoga. Mm -hmm. And I'm just here to say, try it. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, there's no time like the present. Try it. And, you know, if you don't have the money to join a studio, that's fine. Um, There are so many different books and DVDs that we Mm -hmm. have in our library. Mm -hmm. And plus, there is so much on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I mean, just go to YouTube and type in yoga. You get every -hmm. every facet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just do it. And um, and also uh, ordered some new DVDs for our library. And... uh, the names escaped me. It was some, something about Yoga Woman. That was mm-hmm. one of the titles. And then oh, yeah. there's something about yoga, something yoga journey. Yeah. So I looked at those two when I was looking at ordering yeah. stuff. I think they were out somewhat recently and came yeah. well recommended. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then um, just something that one of my instructors always says when when people are struggling with a a different position. This is your journey. Don't look at other people. You know, mm-hmm. this is your journey, and just do the best you can. And and with that frame of mind, I just I just feel myself getting a little better at stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'll never I'll never do a handstand, and that's fine. <laughs> I've accepted that. <laughs> but uh, like a, a, an instructor said, um, it's not. It doesn't make your yoga practice any better if you can do a handstand. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make your life any better. So, anyway, um, I just recommend yoga. Awesome. <laughs> and then next, uh, Markel, what do you recommend? Well, summer is a good time for daydreaming. And I think one of the things we all daydream about is uh, what other job could I do? <laughs> uh, so I'm going to recommend an online career aptitude test from BuzzFeed. Ooh, uh, I'm not going to give the URL, but if you Google BuzzFeed career aptitude test, it'll pop right <laughs> up at the top. Um, it's relatively short, and it's a lot of fun to take. And once I got done, and I took it a couple of times, um, <laughs> Apparently, I would be happy being a chef, restaurant (laughs) owner, travel guide, or farmer. Oh, wow. Wow. So give it a try, the BuzzFeed Career Aptitude Test. All right. (laughs) Fun. Will do. All right. So, Erica. 
Uh, so my recommendation is public library related as well. Um, this summer, um, my daughter was is participating in the summer reading program through our public library in DeForest. Um, and this year, they're doing something really cool. They're using, it's actually a product that's brought to them by Demco. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Wandu Reader. And it really engages the kids. You basically start an account for them. They can um, enter the title of a book that they've read, um, and it allows them to accumulate like dollars or um, each library has a little bit different. Our library has um, dragon dollars mm -hmm. um, that they can <laughs> go and spend at the at the library. So not only does it encourage them to read, but then they have to at some point go into the library. Um, and then it has different challenges. Like each week, um, one is to encourage them to come in for programming so they could get dragon dollars mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. and things like that. So in general, I would just say like, Look at what your public library is doing or your academic library. Um, see if there are any summer reading programs. They usually are pretty creative in what they have available. Um, and, you know, as always, encourage the young ones to read. Um, so that's it. That's my great. Oh, some really innovative stuff nowadays. Yeah. All right. So um, sounds like that's it for us today. Um, thanks, everyone. And Erica, thank you for being our guest. Thank and you, you can come back anytime. Mm -hmm. And this has been a production of Madison College Library's Creator Studio. Thank you all for listening. Thank you.